Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Crossing Past Television Ministry is on the move. And I'll tell you, the guests we got are unbelievable, coming from all over the country. And the special one today I just met, I just know that you're going to enjoy this program. You know, I'm going to give you a scripture. Matthew 6.33 says, 6.34 says, Take no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought of itself. Sufficient unto the day is evil. But I'm going to go to back at Matthew 6.33. It said, But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all its righteousness, and all these things shall be added. And here I stand today, out of a filthy world, telling people about Jesus. In fact, when I first got saved, my one of my sisters, I, I've led seven of my eight sisters to the Lord on a born-again expenses. I was 11th child of 12. I just want to throw this in. Uh -huh. And you know what? My one sister called me and she said, who do you think you are? Yesterday, you had a bar, a nightclub, and this and that, and you're telling people they got to be saved? <laughs> well, I wasn't going to tell about the Paul on the road to Damascus at that time, uh -huh. but that's the only one to go, but that's going to happen. I'm telling Amen. people. Anyway, Joyce, what do you think? That's yeah. <laughs> exciting, isn't it? Yes. It is exciting. You know, Dawn, after all these years of being on television, you would think sooner or later we would run out of people to interview. But the longer we're on, the sweeter it gets. And today, clear from the middle, north, I guess, western part of Pennsylvania, this lovely couple, Juanita and Johnny Bergeson, right? Did I get that That's right? right? Bergeson. You got it. Um, have come to share with us. They have a wonderful testimony and a good business. And who wants to be first? Who wants to be first? Well, Juanita usually likes me to start okay. off talking. Great. I generally talk a lot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, how I got saved was my grandfather was a Baptist minister. Uh huh. And uh, at an early age, I told him I wanted to be baptized. He was having a baptismal service, and he said, well, I want to be baptized. So he asked me a lot of questions to make certain I understood it. And he, I gave him all the right answers because I was always in church and I uh -huh. was always in Sunday school. But I don't really know where yeah. exactly my heart was then. Huh. Yeah. And I went through the motions. I was baptized, but my high school years and college years, I got a long ways away from God. I just wow. got a long ways away mm -hmm. from God. Wow, wow. And then um, mm. I was at a Billy Graham film and in a public movie theater, and they gave an invitation. I got halfway up out of my seat, and I stopped and I sat back down because I thought, what are these people going to think? What kind of sins are they going to think I've been committing? <laughs> what are they going to think I've been doing all these years? I'm always in church. I'm always in Sunday school. I do everything everybody thinks a Christian should do. I was a really good Pharisee. <laughs> <laughs> I'll vouch for that. <laughs> oh, dear. And, um, but um, for two years, God, I kept thinking, you know, Jesus said, if we're ashamed of him before men, he'll be ashamed of us when he returns with his father's right. angels. Ooh. And I thought, right. uh-oh, does that mean I'm going to go to hell? And it Good. really bothered me. So you sat down. You did not go back and recommit your life. No. Okay. <laughs> I sat down. and But for two years, it just kept troubling me. Uh-huh. And uh, I turned down opportunity after opportunity mm. to publicly confess Jesus as right. my Lord and Savior. And I just, I just mm -hmm. couldn't do right. it. Well, but the Holy Spirit was still tugging at your mm -hmm. heart. Right. That's but the important I, thing. I kept remembering Bible verses, though, that my dad had taught me in my childhood. Uh, what should it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? The soul that sinneth, it shall die. And other Bible verses. And Juanita and I were in a new city uh, that uh, we had uh, moved to, and we had just started attending a church there. Mm 
Uh, you were, were you were, we were, married. were you still were you saved yet or were you met in, were you backsliding or call what you want because you got married now right right okay, it depends it depends on your theology <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> when I got saved yeah. but I I wasn't I wasn't exactly right with God so I you mean knew it. I you was knew ashamed it. of him yes Aww. I was ashamed to admit publicly in front of people yeah. that uh, mm -hmm. I needed him as my savior. Mm. Sure. And we went to um, this Billy Graham film in a church. Um, it was actually at Light and Life Chapel. Uh -huh. It was a free Methodist church uh -huh. uh, at the time it was called. They've since changed their name to Light and Life Chapel. And every Bible verse that had been troubling me was brought out in that Billy Graham film. Wow. God had been preparing me for two years to see wow. that film. Right before the film ended, um, they, um, I thought, they're going to give an invitation. And I thought, what am I going to do? I just can't do it. I just can't go forward. I just can't do it. Mm -hmm. And right then, Jesus spoke to me. He spoke to me right inside my head and he said, if you love me, why won't you stand up for me? Mm. And I loved him, but I was ashamed and afraid. Mm -hmm. And right then the film ended, a man went to the front of the church and he says, normally I ask people to come forward if they want to publicly profess Jesus as Lord and Savior. But tonight, all I want to ask you to do is to stand up right where you're at. Mm. Well, Jesus had just said to me, if you love me, why won't you stand up for me? <laughs> I jumped up uh, so fast and oh, stood up wonderful. and it wasn't funny. And I looked to my right and there was my wife standing beside oh. me. Reminded me of another Bible verse, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Wow. Mm. And uh, Were you saved and then it, were you saved the same night or did you have a well, family come in here? I, my first experience with God, and I can't really say that that's when I was saved, I started reading my Bible. This was before this, and mm -hmm. as I was reading my Bible, I had this, I would say it was more for me an intellectual experience. I sat there and I looked at how the scripture was saying we should get along with other people, and I knew mm -hmm. two things. One, I knew it was true, and two, I knew this is not how we do things. Uh -huh. And so I sat there just becoming absolutely aware that what I had in my hand was uh -huh. not just true, that it was truth. Uh -huh. And I think that that laid the, set, the foundation so that mm -hmm. when he stood up, I stood up at the same time because God had prepared my, my heart and mm -hmm. made that full commitment, I'm going to serve you, God. Wow. So. Wow. So then, now that you're both saved and on your way, here's a lot of times some people think they're saved just because they're a Baptist or Catholic. You know that. I mean, right. the denomination saved you or say a, say a prayer. And, you know, we know that God, Romans 10, 9 and 10 said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, right? But the heart man believeth unto salvation with the mouth's confession, right? Mm -hmm. This now brought you to the, to the, real place where God's using you both. And I'll bring in, what are you were talking about, the, the kingdom. Tell me about some of that, if, you, if I may. First, in your background, was there anything that you, did you, did you have any problems in your childhood? Were you raised in a Christian family or? No, I was not raised in a Christian family. My father was an evangelical atheist. An so evangelical that just, atheist? <laughs> yes, he not only was an atheist, he tried to uh, recruit other people to be atheists. There are a lot of atheists around today that do the same thing. But I would just mm -hmm. want to say, yeah. and if you're out there and you have someone whispering in your ear, you ought to be an atheist, don't listen to them. Even my father, before he passed away, came to the understanding that God exists. So, wow. you know, but I was not raised in a Christian home. And God, he had grace, he had mercy, and it came for me through reading mm -hmm. the scripture. So everyone has access to the scripture. Everyone can find God either through talking to someone, through right. this great program that you have, or just crack mm -hmm. open the scripture. He'll right. speak to you. Yeah. Best place to meet the Lord is right inside these little books that we call Bibles. And it, it never yeah. changes. No. And 
He, it's he's the always there to speak to same us. Same yesterday, today, and forever. It's not going to change. God's word is right. not and, going to change. And so what happened next in our lives was I thought, I need to, I need to do things for God. So I thought, <coughs> well, what should I do? And I thought, well, the Bible says to visit the sick. So I started going to the hospital and visiting sick people. And, mm -hmm. but I couldn't visit everyone in the hospital. There were two hospitals in the city I lived in. And I thought, I can't possibly visit everybody. And so I asked my pastor about it. And I decided that everyone that lived within a certain distance of our church, I would visit or anyone who had any affiliation with our church, Praise I would Lord. visit. And you know what God did? He arranged for the people he really wanted me to talk to, to uh, be in a room with someone who was connected to our church in some way, or who, w or they were in a room with someone who lived within that distance of our wow, church. Wow. Because time and time again, it wasn't the person I thought I was going to visit God really wanted me to see. And uh, uh, th those were wonderful times uh, visiting people who were sick, and not all of them recovered. So God was preparing you for maybe a job or a business. You know, how, how, how about you, you have a business yeah, you're now? Taking the Go long ahead. Road to okay. There. <laughs> <laughs> well, th then I thought my best talent's horse training. I should use that for God, and. Uh, I trained a purebred Arabian horse, um, actually laid out a fleece. I said, God, if you want me to travel around with an Arabian horse and <laughs> present a gospel message at horse shows, fairs, rodeos, places where people aren't expecting to hear a gospel mm -hmm. message, uh, get me a purebred Arabian horse. <laughs> um, Three weeks later, a multimillionaire I'd met for 10 seconds about 10 years before uh, gave me a purebred Arabian horse. Wow. Oh, and uh, um, his half brother, which she also owned, was valued at $50,000. And God just provided so many things uh, for me to do this ministry with the horse. We uh, were using a 22 year old horse truck, it broke down right across the street from a horse farm. We were able to borrow a horse, or re no, we were able to rent a horse trailer for $35 to take it 600 miles and borrow a car and get to the places we needed to go. The day before I needed to go to the next place I didn't have a way to get to, uh, a Jewish man gave me a 28-foot horse trailer about a half an hour after I witnessed to him. <gasps> he looked me square in the eye and he says, I can spot a phony in five minutes. I want to give you this trailer. Wow, that's and We had so many incredible experiences. Yeah. And then one day, everything that we were doing, we had shows booked to the end of the year. They all canceled. We said, what's happening? We couldn't figure it out. We sought the Lord. Johnny tried to get a job. We were looking here and there. We couldn't figure out what to do. It, the, a recession was going on, so there were not a lot of jobs. And Johnny came to me and said, I feel like I should start a business. In all labor, there's profit. He mm -hmm. said, the Lord has just really impressed on me that I might only make 50 cents an hour, but that's enough. And so we started. Better than making nothing. That's better. Uh, so we work enough business. hours. <laughs> so what? Uh, the business uh, kingdom.com uh -huh. uh, became listed as a Twice Inc. 500 company. We started it on $500, borrowed on a credit card, Say and a the couple name thousand. Kingdom.com. Kingdom.com. And we provide uh, technology for churches, websites, anything churches would need, communion supplies. Choir robes. Yeah. In any special area? Of mostly, United? mostly technology, websites, uh, choir robes, um, communion yeah. supplies. Well, you we, name it. We all types of church we, supplies. We, we supply them all over the U.S. and even around the world. 
Oh, We're my. connected to most of the active churches in the United States and God did it because right. there we were, no job, borrowed money on a credit card, a um, couple thousand dollars from a printer and then God just blessed it, it exploded. Uh, we've been in business about 30 years and now we are really focusing on helping people understand what the kingdom is all about. A lot of people, they get saved, they start feeling like one year looks the same as another, mm -hmm. and they say, isn't there more to life than this? Mm -hmm. And um, I'm here to say, yes, there is more to life. It, <laughs> we are saved out of uh, the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Wow. And the kingdom of light, that is where mm -hmm. we can live. We can find that special purpose that God has had for us. If we are struggling with things like, you know, our marriages mm -hmm. or our families, God gives us all the solutions for those right in the scripture. His word says he wants us to prosper. So you, you more or less, <clears throat> from somebody has problems in different areas, you can work with them, right? <clears throat> what we're doing in our region is we are uh, part of a team with uh, pastors all across our region and we're putting together training. You know, it says, go make disciples. Mm -hmm. Disciples are, are skilled, disciplined followers. A lot of times people struggle with things because they don't have the skills. So we, uh, along with pastors and church leaders from across our region, are working to put together real training so people can build competency in marriages, so they can have excellent marriages, wow. excellent families, uh, they can resolve conflict, even looking at work. You know, God wants us to be able to work effectively, start businesses, prosper. Those are all skills, and together, we might not be able to do that individually, equip people, but together we can equip everyone. So. Wow, then, and you got a 75 employees or something now? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, that's an opportunity right there to, within your company, right, to witness to them about oh. being born again, right? We've seen many of our employees become Christians. Mm -hmm. um, we hire people who have integrity, and uh, a lot of them were Christians, but many become Christians after coming to work for us. And then right on top of that, right within our company, we're working to help people build skills in their marriages and in their families and in conflict resolution. Um, at lunchtime, rather than just eating lunch by yourself, gather together with other people mm -hmm. and we have, maybe this person's interested in training for family and this one is interested in training for marriages. So we're offering resources right there within our business. Um, any place that people gather, there is an opportunity to extend the kingdom. Wouldn't you, excuse me, there's so many, you know the divorce rate is so high among the Christians, it's almost over 50% they said now. Okay, supposedly, maybe a, maybe won't say born again Christians or somebody that calls himself a Christian, right? But the pastors are involved in so many things in their lives, right? And they won't seek help. And then you could even help marriage bring two. If they come in and they want help, you even take the time to do that too. It's uh, exactly. We, we strongly believe in the ministry of reconciliation. And uh, my wife is very gifted at this, and she also has taken um, uh, training. She's been in the process of a certification uh, for the last three years through Peacemaker Ministries. And um, she is very gifted with her training in uh, helping people who uh, have uh, marriage problems or other problems. Um, um, she can't say very much about it, but I do know that uh, there are people who are on a, a verge of divorce who are, who are no longer living together. Mm -hmm. And uh, after she has talked with them and following these, these principles, um, they're, um, they get back together can't say 100% of the time, but sure, most of sure, the time. Well. well, it's because God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He has given us the ability to learn how to 
forgive each other, how to take responsibility for the areas that we have contributed. And then when that foundation of peace is laid, then we can lay the next foundation, which is building the skills to meet each other's needs, not to do the things that erode love, but to do the kind of things that grow love. And those types of things, they, you know, they did a survey on marriages. Mm -hmm. They surveyed a group of people who had been married 35 to 50 years. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to find out the common thing that all of them had in common. Mm -hmm. So you, this was so surprising. They didn't find hardly anything that was common except for one thing, is that the couples that were married that long work deliberately to have happy marriages. Aww. That was the key to success, was to work deliberately. Wow. I don't know if this is true or not, but I read somewhere that it's easier to fall out of love than it is to fall in love. You know, I don't know about you guys, but women look for things in a man. You know, what do I want? You know, what's my expectation? Who will I even date? You know, a lot of guys ask you for dates, and nah, you know, what do men look for? <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> but is it true? Is it easier to fall out of love than it is to fall in love? Yes, I believe that's true because, oh. see, our human nature, when there are conflicts between us, it uh -huh. reduces that romantic love. Uh -huh. And to have the, the proper romantic love, we have to remove those conflicts from uh -huh. between us. It's almost like a formula. When you get it right and we're meeting each other's needs, romantic love just blooms. Wow. And so that's why building the skill is that foundation to keep that romantic love wow. flowing. You know, time is running so fast, uh -huh. you know, I just want to know, oh, Johnny, if maybe you could, either you two, maybe, in fact, we'll try the woman this time, if you don't mind. Uh -huh. Could you look in that camera? Maybe there's some, you know, in a, in a minute here, just make you a prayer or say that some family out there that mm -hmm. there's hope but it's only through Jesus Christ. Would you do that? Oh, yes. I, I'm sure that there are people watching today that you say, well, I'd like to have romantic love with my spouse. Maybe you're on the verge of divorce. Maybe you're not even in the same house, but you say, I'd like to get back with my husband. Or maybe you say, I'm estranged from my children or my family or maybe my best friend. I just want to encourage Very you good. that Jesus has given everything that you need to put your relationships back in order. And I would suggest first that you get your life right with God because if it's not right in here, you can't extend it to someone else. And one of the good foundations is to get in the scripture and understand the kind of things that he wants of you. And those are the foundation that you need in place to restore those relationships with other people. Mm. And then reach out to believers and say, I need help with restoration. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation mm -hmm. and perhaps right in your circle or as you reach out, you'll find someone to help with that ministry of reconciliation Praise. that you need in your Praise life. Praise God. You know, boy, time runs so fast. Could you just real quick give the kingdom the, the website and everything again over there? Okay, our business website is very simple, kingdom.com. Anything that churches need, we're there to to help serve churches. And then if you want to know more about the kingdom, go to lifecenter.com, life center, one no, word. Club. Oh, dot club, lifecenter.club. That'll take you to our Facebook page and you could find more about wow. living the kingdom. Well, I don't know about you out there, but this couple that have come down here all the way from the city just to tell people about Jesus, where do you stand? That's the most important thing. You know, we at Crossing Pass have been trying to bring in people that all over the country have come to us. We are now on, like I said, 200 cable companies in 35 states. And recently, a lovely lady donated $5,000 to this background for us. Mm -hmm. And we need funds, and we don't spend much time asking for funds. It costs us like $500 to $600 a program. And we've had people that bought one half program or one program and donated it. And our support comes from the $7 a month, the $10 a month, the $20 a month. That's all I asked as far as financial conditions are here. We need your support. We need your help. But where do you stand? Like the brother said here, where do you stand? See, 
there is help out there. If God can help me and Joyce and them and our problems, he can help you. He, he can say, well, I've done so many things that God, no, God doesn't care. You just come to him and say, I am a sinner. And right away, his ears just perk up. Holy Spirit is right there and he'll accept you right where you're at. There's no long set sinner's prayer. It's the heart. And he did it for me 41 years ago, 42 years ago. He can do it for you today. There's a telephone number, 724-981-7777 or 1-855-981-9777. Call out. People are standing by. God bless you and thank you for watching Crossing Pass Television Ministry. Hi, my name is Pastor Ronald Kozar. I'm a former NFL football player with the New England Patriots and also with the Detroit Lions. But I struggled with going blind and being overweight. So if you struggle with weight loss, issues with your eye, arthritis, pains in your neck, lower back, or your knees, I know that Freezor has helped me and it could also help you. Please go to our website or dial that 1-800 number and get your order placed today. When you support Crossing Paths, you're helping to release the power of testimony. There's many people who know about God, but they don't know Him personally. They don't know His true nature and they don't know His heart. The stories that we bring you each week testify to the power of God and to the love of God. Through these testimonies, people all over the country are getting to know the Lord and developing a hunger to know Him more. When that relationship becomes alive, it's clear to see that no person or no situation is too far gone for the power of God. I like to share with people that it's very important to know who you are in Christ because that day, if that was me laying there, I know that I would have missed uh, heaven. Revelation 12, 11 says, and they overcame him, referring to the devil, by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. God is still the same. He's still this, God's word is still the same. They say times are changing. Times are changing, but God is still the same. <laughs> it's, it's a no brainer for me. You don't have to have a doctor degree to know oh. that God is good. He loves sinners. He just does not like to sin. When you partner with Crossing Pass and sow a seed into this ministry, you are helping us get the power of the testimony and the gospel over the airway. This will help people understand better who God is and connect them to the plans He has for them. Please call us today and support this vision.